Good evening, everybody. Um, I promise this will take uh, no more than a four-minute uh, four mile. Um, Eamon and I didn't say that I was going to do it on a bicycle dressed as Santa Claus, but... Uh, um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm in the very privileged position here tonight um, as being the writer. Um, the person who got to tell these amazing stories. It's not about me, I'm only here to share with you um, 15 good reasons to be happy in life. And to that end, before I just take a couple of moments to tell you a little bit about the people in the book, um, there are some people, if you'll allow me to say thank you to, uh, without whose assistance, trust me, there never would have been a book. Um, somebody once told me, in life, you always have a choice. Maybe not about the SH1 that hits the fan and appears on your screen or your daily, on your daily monitor, but you certainly have a choice in how you react. Um, and that choice is better or bitter. It's your choice. I'm very privileged to have people in my life who have always made me realize that that choice is better. Without these people, this book would not have been possible, period. Uh, I'm the worst speller in the world, and uh, layout, typing, and proofing are not my thing. So let me begin by telling you that if you were to get the version of the book that I wrote without any assistance, I'm not sure that you would have bought it. So please put your hands together in acknowledging the following people. Um, Anne Swanton, Maura Dolan, and Genevieve Farrell, without whom we would not have a book no. Um, I'm not going to lie, you, you heard the reference earlier on to running out of money in the Seven Summits. Anybody who knows me knows that that's a common occurrence throughout my life. I'm always running out of money. But thankfully money doesn't make us happy. The only thing that can do that is ourselves. Um, having said that, we almost didn't have a book up until a couple of weeks ago. It really is a roller coaster journey. Um, there's one gentleman that I have to say a very special thank you, because without him, there wouldn't have been a printed book. Mr. Joe Gavin from Accelerate Marketing. Oh. Thank you, Um, on a personal note, there are three people here tonight that I want to say a very special thank you to. Um, first of all, um, one of the heroes in the book um, is uh, Seamus Jurek, and an incredible story of a wonderful Irish jockey who defied the odds. We'll come back to Seamus in a moment. But his mother is another true legend. And uh, this woman has just been a beacon of hope in my life when things have not been going well. She's always been there. Never asks for anything in return, just what can I do? And uh, she gets phone calls from me at three in the morning, she rings me back and then I ring her back at three in the morning. Um, and a very, very good friend of hers, who had no reason to do this other than because he believed in Tish and he believed in what I was trying to do. A man who played with Nicky English on some of the great teams from the Tipperary Hurlers from the 1980s. A man by the name of Vincent Mullins. Vincent Mullins and Tish Durek, thank you for being here. Um, the book, and the reason we're all here, Michaela, I looked. Um, let me begin by first of all saying that uh, I couldn't row an ocean, I couldn't row, I couldn't climb, I'm still not a great climber. Um, but one man who could climb, and one man who I think Eamon and I will both agree, whose achievement was greater than any four minute mile, respectfully Eamon, or climbing Everest and breaking any world records that I may have achieved on a mountain, is the man to whom this book is dedicated to. A true, absolute hero. Um, always will be, always was, and um, what can I say, but his family are here tonight, so to the McDonald family, thank you so much, this book is dedicated to Jerry McDonald. Jerry McDonald, ladies and gentlemen, was and is the only Irish man to ever summit what we would call the Olympics of climbing, and that is K2 Mountain. And he died tragically on the way down, but he died doing what he always did in life, and that was giving selflessly. And he died saving the lives of three Koreans. And that magnificent story is contained, and he is a true gentleman. So to the McDonald's, it's been a privilege. Thank you. Um, what about these guys? Oh. Go, baby. I have to say, um, this man, this man, ladies and gentlemen, rang me during the week, and uh, Gary, the, the lads were in touch. You know, I mean, it's no coincidence that Gary Keegan um, is the legend he is, because that work ethic that Gary Keegan grew up with is instilled in his son. And this man rang me up and he said, you know what, Ian, 
Um, I know when you mentioned the house, when you came to interview Dad for the book, he said, but uh, I'd love to write a song, and I'd love to dedicate it to Jer and to the book and to all the heroes. And he did that in 48 hours, maybe, together with his, his colleagues in the band. Gentlemen, you are a legend. Thank you. And if there's anything we can do through this project to make this country aware of the talent that you guys have, then it will be a privilege to do that as well. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, to our heroes, um, you will allow me to indulge for a couple of moments in acknowledging these wonderful people, because without whom we wouldn't have this book. Um, let me begin with a lady who gave her entire life to charity. I've dabbled in and out. I've done my bit here and there. Some of us have done a little bit here and there. This woman gave all of her life. Did it despite the fact that she had to raise a young family, despite the fact that she lost her beloved husband at an early stage. This woman is a true giver in the giving sense of the word. And she's given a life to the Irish Red Cross, Miss Hannah Sheehan. If Hannah's here tonight, Hannah, you are a true hero. Um, it was a privilege to travel to Hannah, and um, after going to meet Hannah, the next gentleman, I was having a, what I thought was a crappy day, and when I met this man, I realized, you know what, Ian, you've got nothing to complain about. And this man is, is a true inspiration, uh, both in the world of medicine, in human terms, and for what he's done for the homeless community of this country. He is a pure example that the only difference between a mountain and a mohill is your perception. Um, Dr. Austin O'Carroll. Our next hero, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard her referenced a few times tonight. Um, I hope I can call her a friend at this stage, um, because I certainly regard her as one. I've had the privilege of knowing this lady on and off for 15 years, and I have nothing but the greatest respect for her personally and professionally. And uh, we call the chapter Behind the Scenes because she's a very, very wonderful woman, and I wanted people to get to know her as a person, apart from her contribution to the Chernobyl Project. Um, you know who I'm talking about, the wonderful Lady Roach. Um, I mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, about, about Jer and his magnificent achievement without oxygen, climbing the world's most difficult mountain. I mentioned the fact that he gave his life climbing on the way down, saving the lives of three Korean climbers. But, you know, that wasn't a one-off with this man. If you, when you read his story, you'll see that he, it was a life of giving. Every mountain he climbed, from helping some of our great adventurers, far greater climbers than I, people like Pat Falvey, he saved that man's life on Everest. He saved people's lives in America, on Denali. Everywhere he went, this man gave, because that's the kind of guy we were talking about in the form of Jerry MacDonald. Um, I'm delighted tonight that Anne and Jim Barry are here tonight. Um, there's, a, there's a wonderful picture here of, um, I think it's with Mick Galway, It'll, we'll come to it in a second, of an inspiring young lady that I had the privilege of meeting and having lunch with. As you can imagine, ladies and gentlemen, every time you meet these people, whatever kind of day you're having gets better by the minute. Uh, there's Hannah, of course, and there's Gary, and uh, outside the Olympic ring in Beijing, that wonderful lady, Emma Farr, we will come to in just a moment, with her father. And um, there, of course, is Jer on one of his many, many great summits. And of course, what can we say about this man, whom we'll come to in just a second, and this man as well. Um, well, the picture is here, but um, <laughs> it's never there when you want it. But Orla Barry is, a, is, a, is an amazing young lady, and she, when I was meeting her, she was graduating um, that very night in um, a degree that she was doing in physiotherapy. Ah, there she is, ladies and gentlemen, pictured with Anne and Jim, and a wonderful, wonderful woman she is as well. And she went through the mill as a teenager, overcame cancer, and I think through her attitude inspired everybody around her, her family, her friends, and all of us to see the glass as being half full. Um, the next gentleman. You know the way you see movies like Backdraft, and you see films like that, and you think of the legends that are firemen. This man is a true fireman in the true legend sense. This man's acts of bravery and courage throughout his entire career were humbling. Not just to write about, but to witness.